What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Mission Fishing Live. We're here live in Carlsbad, San Diego County. How's everybody doing tonight? Got a new setup for you guys. Got kind of a dual camera thing so we can uh, show up some uh, knot tying and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to have a guest too. So what I want to go over today, for those of you guys that are new to the show, basically we go over some shout outs. Um, if you guys watch the replays, um, I'm going to start doing like um, the chapters so you can get to the things earlier. So I know a lot of people are watching the replays that don't watch the live show. So if you're into it for the tutorials or how to do, um, you know, some of the things that I show, we'll um, do the chapters on that. But for those of us that are here live, ready to interact, looking to have a good show. We're going to go over um, some gear tips. Um, I think we're going to have a guest come on. Hopefully we'll see if he shows up here. And um, yeah, we'll go over some gear. We'll go over the AG chain knot, the knot that I use primarily for um, jig fishing and stuff like that. It's a cool knot and we'll go over that. A little further let's see who we got in the house today iron fish oos what's going on jessica muto peter 86 oos randall oos what's going on brother glad to see you in here again i'm ready for my professional angling lessons uh i i want to consider myself a professional maybe you'll get some uh well i guess that, i guess that depends on your degree of um fishing uh, expertise uh, i'm not quite the pro level yet i'm like maybe maybe a blue belt in fishing we're working on it. TV Metal Art, welcome to the show. What's going on, Todd? Salty Dangler in the house. What's going on, Salty? Salty Dangler sounds dirty. He is dirty, dude. We should call him Dirty Dangler. Saltwater Slayer, Oos, welcome to the show. What's going on, dude? I saw you out there catching those jig spotties. That's awesome, dude. Love seeing it. Doug Rubin, El Sueño, what's going on? Doug, did you, um, I saw your picture. Were you catching that, um, was that thresher you caught this week or today? Or was that like an old picture? That thing was huge. That was pretty awesome. We caught a thresher shark. I saw that on Instagram. Danny Perez. Oos, what's going on? Kiwi Reacts. Oos, welcome to the show. Graham. Happy Thursday, dude. That's right. Almost time. Almost weekend time. Let's see. Yeah, it has been a while. What, since you caught the fish? That's awesome, dude. Down in SD. What's going on, man? Fernando, what's up, dude? Good to see you. You've been out there yet for those bluefin? Freaking crazy. William, ooh, welcome That's to the show. Bill. That's Captain Bill? Yeah, William Oh, yeah. Changing, switching up the name on us. Going stealth mode. Mm -hmm. What's going on, Captain Bill? Oh, I was thinking Captain Dan. Yeah, that is, <laughs> that is Bill. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, uh, that's Captain Bill, a captain of the Malahini. And we've actually chartered his boat for September what 24th mm -hmm. so september september 24th we're going to do um a charter on his boat a submission at sea we got lots of giveaways um you know a day of fishing so we still have some we opened up some tickets we sold out the initial ones and we had some reserved to kind of see what would happen so we've got those open uh, if you go to submissionfishing.com you can get on the boat with us um it's gonna be an awesome day so like i said we opened a few up and that's not till september hopefully we get on uh, i don't know if a we don't know if I don't think a passport's needed, but I don't know if we're going to be in Mexico or where we're at. It's really all going to depend where the fish are. Hopefully, yellowfin, um, dorado, stuff like that start showing up. But yeah, we're going to have a good time. We're going to have giveaways, raffles, uh, seminars. It's, it's going to be awesome, guys. So a lot, a lot of people from the show are going. So shout out to Captain Bill. If you want to get on his boat before that, the Malahini, check it out. Been on there a few times. Awesome boat. We'll we'll be on there later. Like I said, submissionfishing.com. If you want tickets, guys, we got a few left. So check that out. See who else we got in here. Mm -hmm. Frank Oos, what's going on, dude? Welcome to the show. Right. Leonard Oos, welcome. Leonard the killer. What is it? The Bay Creeper? <laughs> that would uh, it was that uh, Brian's always talking about. That's funny. Brought in 110, 110 pounder last Thursday. Dude, that's awesome. Where were you? How far did you go down? I'm curious to hear about that. Benji Moreno Oos, what's going on, dude? Welcome to the show. Yeah, weather was brutal, dude. Richie Rich, what's up, bro? Welcome to the show. If you're new here, man, if you guys just type oos, if you see people typing oos, just means they've uh, they like the show and that they hit that like button. So go ahead and do that if you guys like it. Uh, how's it going? Hope to see you on the 20th. Yeah, dude, we'll be there. You think the bluefin will still be around that late in the season? I mean, they'd be cool if they were. I know they were here like all last year and we had the cows. Saltwater Slayer says it's been a while since he's been able to catch a live show. 
Oh, Saltwater Slayer. Been a while since you cut a live show. That's awesome, dude. Glad you're in here, though. I see you slaying it on those jigs. That's awesome, man. Let's see here. Let's see. Got my tickets for the VIP table of CCA. Yeah, that's awesome. For those of you guys that don't know, um, CCA is um, putting on, was it the brew? Something in brew. You could look it up. Uh, CCA Southern California. Mm-hmm. We're going to be at, I believe, the Portuguese Hall in um, San Diego in June. 11th i really have to check my dates for that but there is a vip table uh, for mmfc so that's what he's going on about I, there might be a few tickets left even if you don't get into the vip table vip it's not really vip it's just a bunch of us going there but um there's you can still get tickets to go good to support the cause definitely support cca for sure guys um and spread the love that you know they're they're out there helping protect our fishing rights and stuff like that so definitely get on there Fernando C, day and a half, Old Glory, assuming offshore, Rosarito. They moved up a little bit, yeah. Taps and apps, June 18th. Dude, I was way off. <laughs> so it's the taps and apps, guys. So yeah, so it's going to be like uh, appetizers and beer. I think that's the name, taps and apps. That's June 18th. Thanks, Todd. Oh, yeah, salty on it too. Hell yeah. So check that out, you guys. CCA, support the CCA. I think with the ticket, you get a membership too. Um, but it's just a good way to support. You know, They're out there fighting for our fishing rights, so. It's a good organization. A lot of guys here in the chat are part of that. It's so definitely good stuff. Yeah, Jessica just put the link in there as well. Yeah, Fernando. So I went out. Um, when did I go out? Last Friday. Last weekend. Yeah, so last weekend I went out looking for bluefin tuna. Um, I went on the T-Bird, and we left Friday, and we fished until Sunday. We're, we fished till Saturday. I, for, so from 2 a.m. till about... So 2 a.m. Friday, we fished all the way through Sunday. Um, I mean, I should say Saturday night at about 11 p.m. Then we came in Sunday, made it to the dock at like 6 p.m. or 6 a.m. And yeah, it was pretty rough. We got a few. I think out of the whole boat, it was probably 30 plus of us. I think maybe there was like 10 fish or something. I didn't get on one, unfortunately. Uh, But the greater fish were huge. I think the smallest one was probably 150 pounds. Um, And... The biggest one, I think, was like probably 200. It was definitely 200 plus, 220, 200 plus pound uh, bluefin tuna. Um, so they're definitely there, guys. The big ones, like it's the small little football fish, or the school fish seem to have kind of disappeared. Hopefully they come back. You know, the fleet hasn't been able to go out because the wind has been so bad. So that whole week it was like nobody was fishing. But it's not only the wind that affects the the, the fleet. It's like the fish move too, you know, uh, kind of messes everything up. And uh, so we went out and, you know, just, just got on a few. And that's where I want to talk about John Escobar. What's going on, dude? Welcome to the show. Sorry, let me catch up here. There's also a CCA. Oh, yeah. Social tournament in September. Keep your eyes on that. Should be a good time. Yeah, definitely. Salty. If you guys like to compete, that's a good thing. Benji Marino bring in the wife. Hell yeah. Oh, Todd's going to have a boot booth at uh, CCA. So, guys, if you know Todd TV Metal Art, he's in here in the chat. He made this uh, this jig behind me. I'd say life size, but it's way bigger than life size. But um, you can see even there in his little profile picture, he's got the his yellow tail there. He has a lot of art, fishing art. I've seen him do flags, good stuff, guys. So check out his booth, uh, check out his website, get some art done. He's got reasonable prices, dude, for handcrafted art. Just super good stuff. Tyler Oos, what's going on, dude? Welcome to the show. Hopping on an eight day in the Indy in June. Dang, dude, eight day trip. <laughs> that's that's extreme dude michael tran oos welcome to the show dude glad you could join us oos watching two streams let's go cave duck that's right roman's doing his thing too i was hopping on there for a little bit but i had to get the stream ready here i like that you're showing the showing the love though guys two streams i love it that's awesome man not sucking all the air out of the room cal is cal's the mvp probably a lot of you guys are watching too so that's awesome Finally was able to catch a good fish on one of your jigs, a Snowco 220. Oh, Kiwi, dude, that's awesome. What'd you catch? Fill us in on the details. And where? And where, yeah. Where were you at? What'd you catch? What were you fishing for? That's awesome, man. Joey Bassin, 24. What's going on, dude? Welcome. Steve Mendoza. Welcome to the show, dude. What's going on? Went out with him in San Nicolas Island. That was cool. Caught some monster rockfish. It was a good time, dude. Thanks for putting that on. Five fish is watching on Instagram. five gill fishing on instagram what's going on dude we're on youtube if you want to hit up the chat if not you can watch on instagram too welcome to the show tv metal art 
Oh, no worries, Captain. Oh, Captain Dan. Oh, got hacked. Talking some other stuff. Yeah, dude, I'm curious about that fish. So, um, forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, we're talking about the, um, so the gear. Um, a lot of this um, kind of show I want to talk about, like gear, things we're doing, things we're not doing, and then like knots you can tie. And one of the things was about the, one of the problems we have with the gear. So, so I went out on, on a day and a half, like I was saying. Uh, blue, blue fin tuna, probably 200 pounds plus, somewhere like 150 pounds. Now, one of the reasons why we had such a low fish count is because it was taking, in particular, it took this one guy um, four and a half hours to bring one fish in. And what kind of sucks about that is usually when you're fishing and when the, the big hog or the big um, cow tunas are in town, usually when the boat finds them, what happens is the captain will say, okay, the fish are here. Everybody was jig fishing. We dropped down there about 300 feet. Now, typically the school comes through and if you get bit, you get bit. Sometimes you don't get bit at all, but every now and then there's one person, maybe two people hook up um, and then the fish goes. So you got this cow tuna, you know, 150 pound plus is just ripping. And one of the biggest problems was this guy, he hooked up, but his gear, he just, he didn't have the right gear for it. Um, it was really undersized. Um, I think he had, he had a single speed um, reel. I think it was an Abbott. I don't know what the, so the, the brand was fine, but it was, it was way too small. I don't know what the drag was. It was probably like 25 pounds or something like that. And the thing was his line was fine. So he had heavy enough, um, heavy enough fishing line. I think he had like maybe 80 pound on it, which is good. 80 to hundred pounds is kind of what we were looking for. And, um, you know, the, the problem was he couldn't reel it in. So it just kept taking drag and, and at best he would fight it and he would still make the fish, you know, so he would get in, get the fish. We probably saw this guy's leader. I would say probably, I don't know, five times. So we would see the leader. So he had probably 25 yards of like, um, mono leader. So he had that, um, braid backing and then the mono leader, he would get to the leader and then that fish would just run. It would take off you guys four and a half hours to fight one fish. And he was really just undergunned. And the sad part of this, it was kind of pissed on a lot of people off, you know, because you, you go out there and you pay a lot of money for these trips and you watch one person fight a fish for the whole time. And people are bitching at the captain and everything. And they're like, and he's kind of like, I, I don't know what you want me to do. You know, um, he just, he, he couldn't reel it in. The reel didn't have the power. And eventually he landed it. I mean, the deckhand, but the thing is the deckhands had to take over this guy. I mean, he was beat. So four and a half hours, I went and took a nap. I went down to the cabin. I passed out for like an hour. I think a lot of people did, you know, the captain's like, Oh yeah, keep working the rail guys. The fish aren't there. The, once the school goes through, I mean, they're gone. You know, nobody else. There was people there that were fishing the whole time, like the whole four hours and you can't hit the bottom. It's not like you can bottom fish. You got to be fishing for the tuna. And nobody else like hooked up in that whole time. I mean, some of those guys were jigging. It's like, man, once that school goes through, they're gone. You got to chase them. Right. So we were parted away from the fleet and, um, yeah, man, it was just, it, it was pretty brutal. And eventually the deckhands got it in only because like they took over. They were like the guy, he wasn't really working the rod. Um, cause the rod still had more to give, but it was mostly his reel. But so they took over. This guy was like dead, right? Four and a half hours of trying to get, it was at this point, it was probably four hours to get in. I kept making a run. So then he, um, the deckhands took over and when they would pull it back, they were literally holding, um, the fishing line so that it wouldn't run. They were like creating drag, like buttoning this thing down. Like, so they pull it in and normally when they do that, the fish would run. So they were getting to the leader and they were like, there was two guys pinching the line down. And at some point they had to tell them, right. They're like, look, dude, you're either going to lose this fish. We're going to kill this fish and get it in. Or you're going to lose it. Like we can't, we can't be here all day, you know? So we had already four hours in just fighting this one stupid ass fish. So they finally were just like holding it down and, and they landed it. It wasn't even the biggest fish of the trip. It was probably, it was still huge. I mean, I'd say 175 pounds. Like it was a beast. Um, and the deckhands got it in probably, I'd say like 20 minutes, you know, once they took over, um, yeah, it was just a different world. They're really working the rod, putting on the fish. I mean, they had to break that fish, um, and that big old blue fin to come in. But the moral moral of the story is, guys, when they tell you to bring the gear, bring bring the heavy gear. Bring, make sure you're bringing the right stuff. You know, a lot of it is not fair to the people that go, and you got a, a chance of just losing them too when you're not that heavy. 
or in this guy's case, he had the heavy line on, on an undersized reel and beat his ass, made him fight a fish for four and a half hours. And then he wasn't even the one that brought it over the rail because <laughs> he just, he couldn't do it. But, um, yeah, it was kind of a disservice to everybody else. So just know what you're going out for, you know, make sure you've got the correct gear. Uh, if you're going out for those bluefin, I mean, you got to make sure you've got a two speed reel and at least have 40 pounds of drag on that thing. So you got to have, you know, a big reel, you know, 45 pounds of drag at least, or 40 pounds, I would say, and make sure your line's heavy enough and just don't, don't go in there undersized guys. Cause it's a pain in the ass to everyone. He ended up getting it and it was fine. But the problem was throughout the rest of the day, um, I don't think we didn't catch any fish after that, you know, cause the bite was in that morning. It was from the AM. We fished from like 2 AM and really didn't pick up, but it was sort of like, like typical. It was at sunset, right? Sunset. And then, or I'm sorry, sunrise a couple hours before sunrise and a couple hours after, but after about noon, it, it pretty much dried up. So um, a lot of us wasted time just watching this guy catches, catches fish on his undersized gear. See Samurai, what's going on, dude? Oos, welcome to the show. The legendary Kevin Nakata. You need a bigger rig. Yeah, I mean, if you're going out for the the big stuff, you know, definitely. If you're if, if it was the school size stuff, it would have been a different story, you know. But the thing is, we knew we knew we were getting into the cows. It's not like there was no um there was no secret about it. All the all the reports prior to that in the few days were like the big, big tuna, stuff like that. Does the Pen 15 XN have enough drag for tuna? Yeah, I would. Um, it's still, yeah, because because the 15 XN has, um, you might have a little more trouble reeling it in because the gears aren't as big, but it's still a two speed. The two speed was part of the problem, but I think even the 15 has got like 35 or 40 pounds of drag. It's when it comes to the 15, you're kind of running into uh, capacity issues. And then just even when the, the body is smaller on the reel, you get less um less cranking power so it is a little harder but it would have been better than what he had for sure honestly like pen 40 is probably the way to go for sure did you see kiwi what kiwi caught with your kiwi what did you say oh, oahu in puerto rico kiwi you got oahu dude in puerto rico on the 220 didn't happen. you didn't get any picks come on dude you go and slay with the 220, catch some wahoos. Don't send me any pictures, man. Heartbreaking. That would have been awesome, dude. Cool. I would have loved to see a wahoo on that thing. I'm glad you got bit, though, dude. That's awesome. Hell yeah, man. Glad to hear it. Heck, Thor, what's going on? Oos, welcome to the show, dude. Glad you can join us. So Fernando says, Seeker 2x4 with the Telica 25, 100-pound test, 15-minute fight for the 110-pound. Yeah, dude. You're doing it right. I saw a guy bring in, he caught a hundred plus pounder on 60 pound braid because that dude knew how to fish too, but his, his rod had enough pull. He had a big enough reel. And even on the 60, he handled it. You know, it, it's all about having the, definitely all about having the right gear for sure. 15 minute fight, dude. That's, that's where it's at. I'll take a 110 pounder for 15 minutes all day. Yeah, dude. What's the, uh, what's the drag on that Talica 25? That's awesome, dude. That's freaking awesome. Benji Marino, 20 grams. <laughs> Guess they'll ask about the 20 grams. Trust me, nobody wants to see the fishing jigs more than I do. Dave, it's all about that knot. Yeah, dude, 100%. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm surprised this dude's that, that four hour fight that that guy's not held up. <laughs> like that, that gear went up, man. Coach Worf, oof, so what's going on? Worf TV, welcome to the show. Rod selections, but yeah, that's a big one too. There were some crappy rods out there that just were not getting it done. And it, it was pretty cool. Spinning Rod Revel, oops, welcome to the show. Yep. All right, guys. Ready to see some of this knot action or what? Dave says it's all about the Makaira 50. See somewhere says Makaira 50. Topless with a seeker, triple H X rail boss, seven minute, 220. Yeah, you guys got, I wish you guys were on that boat. You would have made my life way better. Gonna have to re grease after those, bro. That rod was, it was like, 
you could start to hear it. It was like it wasn't smoking, but it, you could start hearing the bearing. It was it was starting to give up, man, for sure. Rod never left the rail. Save your vax. Yeah, man. You guys know how it's done. You got the pro pro tune anglers right there. Eric Lehman, Oos, welcome to the show. What's going on, Judge? Glad to have you in here. Yeah, dude, I've been been waiting for these jigs, but they're I mean. They're almost here. I'm going to keep saying it, but I'm tired of the wait. I know you guys are too, but once they're here, I think we'll get on a good uh, production plan afterwards and just keep them rolling. Let's see here. All right, guys. So let's talk about... Actually, let me mute this real quick. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. I'll text them back. It's on another one. Sorry about that, guys. We got a we got a special guest hopefully coming on today. So we were just just communicating with him. So let's see. On to the gear. So I've been tying this knot, and I know a lot of you guys were curious about it. And uh, I saw a few of them actually on the boat. Uh, this is a knot that is is primarily designed for jigging. It's a jigging knot, and it was developed. I mean just for the specific need one of the it's the ag chain knot and one of the cool things about it is it's a hundred percent knot and it'll last longer than the line wheel so we tested one of these in cca they had one of those um machines to test it tested over a hundred percent i think we were using 20 pound or 30 pound mono uh and i think it tested it at like 43 pounds or something like that so the line broke before the knot did and the purpose of the knot is that it has spring to it so it has pull and it's called the ag chain knot and there's a couple variations there's a couple ways to do it it's actually pretty simple to do um it seems like it's complicated it seems like it's long um but i can tie i've been tying this thing with like 15 pound test which is you probably don't need a spotty's never going to use that but i use it just to practice it's not that i've been using uh, primarily to the to the jig itself and once you get the hang of it and you start making it, it, it doesn't take that long. I think when you see one tied up, you're just like, man, this thing is crazy. But it's not that bad. So hopefully you guys can see this thing. We'll start with the jig. And I'm going to tie to the jig just for the sake of um, for the sake of the video. Normally, you know, you would have the ring. We talked about that on the last video where you got the split ring, the solid ring. We'll use some 80 pound here just so we can get the. Let me know if you guys can see that video well. So, this is going to be my main line, obviously, right? I'll cut this off. If you guys want me to go over something, let me know. <clears throat> like I said, this knot is the bomb for, for jigging purposes. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start. I'm going to go through, right, once. We all know this part. I'm probably going to pull out a good amount. I would say at least 12 inches or so of the tag end. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through again. So I'm going to do two loops. Now, what's important here. You know, one thing I didn't check, guys, if you guys had sound for that. But um, so we don't want these to cross over, right? We want these lines 
Could you guys hear me when I was doing that other part? Oh, you guys did lose audio. Okay, so I think when I took myself off camera, you guys lost audio. So basically what I was saying is you want the loops to be like this. And you don't want the lines to cross over. So when I want, I want these two lines perfectly aligned. Because when they cross, they'll bite into each other. So when you're fighting a big fish, you don't want the two lines biting. So from here, I'm just going to basically do a series of half hitches. So I'm going to go under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. And you probably can do this, I don't know, eight times to 20 times, depending how long you do it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch this because I don't want that knot to go anywhere. And I'm going to make sure it stays straight. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go under. So when I say under, I'm going under the main line. This is the main line. And this is the tag end. So I'm going to take the tag end. I'm going to go under. And then I'm going to go through the loop itself. So I'm going to go under this line. I'm going to go back to the, the hoop. And I'm going to pull it with my teeth. Just down tight. We're only fishing in assassin right now. I'm going to wet it up every now and then. So that one was under. Right? Now I'm going to go over and through the loop. Over. Under. Now I'm just going to repeat this. Alternating. Over. And pull it tight. Under. Over. I'm going to go under. Over. Under. We'll just do it for that. Normally I do like eight times. So then this is basically the knot. It's a super pretty knot. Look at that thing. And you can do this, I mean, 16 to 20 times. So we've got the knot here at the end, which we've got the two loops that aren't crossing. And then we've got the chains. Now to finish this up, I'm going to go back. So this is the tag end. I'm going to go to the main line. I'm going to put it over three times. One, two, three. See that? I'm going to cinch this down. So I'm going to pull this knot. So this is just to create, um, just hold it on. Just This is just basically so that the line doesn't come unraveled. There we go. And then basically I just snip it right here. Now, traditionally, what people do is they take a lighter and they'll melt this tag end on just so like it doesn't come out. Um, I've done it for like, if I'm at home, you know, cause I don't carry a lighter anywhere. I don't really think it matters to be honest with you. It just, so this doesn't slide out. Once you tie it off, you can, some people don't do this last part. And then they just do the, um, then they just do the chain and then melt the end. Sorry guys having problems with this thing. Can I send you the link you sent me? Yeah. And that's about it. As you can see. It's hard to pull, but it's going to be hard to do on here. The knot actually stretches out. So it has a, some shock absorbing elements to it, which is pretty awesome. So this is the knot I've been using for all jigging. 
Um, it said it's 100% knot. This thing will basically never break on you. And um, it's a good knot. It's a pretty knot. It's not that easy to, not that hard to tie. It looks a lot more difficult than it is, but that is the AG chain knot. So a lot of people have been asking which knot I've been using or they see it. Tied up on my rigs a lot. And there it is. Super pretty knot. Any questions, comments, concerns? Let me see here. Don't know if the teeth can handle that knot. <laughs> yeah, you could do it with the pliers, you know, when you're pulling it down. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's it could be brutal on those teeth. For real, it looks like I'm gonna have to see. Yeah, don't show your dentist this knot, man. <laughs> They'll hate you for it. Hard to see, maybe. Let me see here. Maybe remove the paper and stay over the desk. I think if I moved the paper, it wasn't it was like having more trouble. Is that better? I thought the paper was helping, but that might actually be. It just wasn't as clearly in focus, I think, because of the paper, maybe. Yeah, I was trying with the paper earlier, and I thought it had a better focus with the paper, but well, it's also a clear I could be wrong. It's kind of our question. So as the knot gets tight, it clinches down to make the knot stronger. Yeah, it just, it's the half hitches hold it on. It's like the knot, even on the jig, isn't like really that tight. So it's, it's weird. It's not like it, it tightens down onto the, onto the jig or, or the ring or whatever you're putting on. It's mostly just the hitches on here that actually create the um, tension or they bite into each other. So it's kind of hard to explain, but it's not really a knot that like is super tight onto the ring. If that makes sense. Can you do it with braid only? Or is it, to my knowledge, it's only a, um, it's only a mono or floral knot. Um, Cause the thing is with braid, like you really, another interesting thing about braid is like, you don't, you don't ever really want to tie braid to like um, a metal, either like a swivel or a jig um, or anything like that. Because what happens is the braid actually slips. The braid is not as good. So whenever you're tying braid, you probably want to, you actually, you want to tie your braid to the mono because whenever you tie binding knots, like the FG knot or the, um, like the Albright knot or not like that, what happens is the actual, the braid or the PE bites into the monofilament or the fluorocarbon. And that's what creates a good knot. Uh, <clears throat> braid knots on like swivels and stuff like that is actually pretty weak. Uh, a lot of times they're only like, 70% or 50% not, especially when you get bigger, they have a big tendency to slip. Um, so if you're going to go not, that's why I kind of got rid of swivels when it came to, I, I used to go like braid to swivel to like mono or whatever, but I got rid of that completely because I started learning that the weak point is typically where your braid is onto like a metal ring. But when you go braid to mono or braid to fluoro, the braid actually bites in and it creates what's called a binding knot, which is it's like a hundred percent knot all the time. So I go all bright knot. So it's a binding knot. Do it till the braid changes colors, almost becomes translucent, and then go on to the mono. Could you use this for braid? Probably. I mean, you could try it, but I, I don't think it's designed for that because you're not going to go braid to a leader, I don't think. Or you shouldn't be going braid to a leader. But I'm sure it would work. I, I, I don't see why not. That's good stuff. Mm, let's see in my opinion too much time i like the training knot for jig connections ties fast about 90 percent. generally the leader is higher test than the braid and it's focused on the line yeah dude i mean you fixed tied the knot you know that that you do for sure especially when, it, when i'm showing it though it takes a, a long time but honestly it's like it goes on quick man it's i can tie that thing in probably 30 seconds or less i'm pretty quick with it it's like anything you know it's first time you try it it is a little bit of a complicated knot like when you're showing it but once you do it you can do it but yeah trailing knots like he was saying that's awesome dude and i know what you're saying when you're out on a boat or like on a kayak or something time is everything this is definitely a knot that you would rig up but you can tie this knot for super heavy stuff like 100 pound mono and stuff like that so it's a good knot for um really heavy stuff but yeah at least try it out if you're doing a lot of jigging I think it's the way to go too, because when you're bouncing that jig up and down all day and it gets hit by something hard, you want that stretch and it's not actually separates without breaking. That's one of the things. 
Let's see here. Beware, it'll break your rod first before you break your knots. <laughs> yeah, dude, I broke my. Remember when I broke my rod? Yeah. Before I broke my knots. <laughs> That's when you know you got good knots. That's pretty funny. Very nice. Well, thank you, Kevin. That was very nice of you. Let's see here. So the the knot is more like a shock is over. Yeah. That's exactly what it is, Benji. It's that's by design. It's a um, it's a shock absorber. Do you double line for your Albright? I don't. I just do the one. Um, what a double line with the Albright is not like an Alberto knot. I think is what they call it. But um, I usually just go single line. The one one of the keys, one of the keys with the um, oh yeah, you're talking about the Alberto knot. Yeah, that's just as good. It's very similar to the. All bright. I like the, the Alberta knots gets a little fat, but Alberta knots good for sure. Yeah, break the floor. That's that's a good knot, dude. Basically just a variation of the all bright. The, the thing about the all bright knot is it's very good if you do it right, but there's very, very, very few or, or not few. There's a very I guess there's very few things that you have to get perfectly right for it to be strong. Like for one thing is the lines coming out the loop have to be on the same side. If you miss that step, that thing will pull through like almost every time. Let's see how fast you can tie it. Maybe if we got time, we got we got our special guest waiting here. Can you hear me? You ready to come on? Oh boy, Aaron, what's going on? Um, nothing. Just chilling. Oh shit! Guys, oh sorry. Aaron Kruger. He uh, hit me up today. Said he had uh, some stuff he wanted to talk about. He just had some mind blown revelations in the fishing world that he wanted to share with us. So he's like, "Hey, dude, can I come on?" I'm like, "Yeah, definitely." So what do you got for okay. me? Aaron? So I thought I knew almost everything, you know, but I learned something new the other day is, is to check your hook. Like if you guys fish jerk baits, crank baits or anything like that, check your hook, make sure they're on right. Because I just learned there's a right way and a wrong way to put treble hooks on. I always thought that they were just treble hooks, you know, you just put them on, but there is definitely a right way. I don't know, like if you guys know this already and I'm just learning about it, but there's a, shit, if I can get this to come in. Oh, here we go. Nice. This right here is just a glide bait, but you see how these hooks on? You want that that middle hook to be sticking right out. Okay, I can't see. It. Oh, there we go. You want that middle hook to be sticking right out, and you want that to be on the bottom too. You want that middle hook to be sticking right out. A lot of times with lucky crafts, they're the worst at putting the hooks on, and they have the worst hardware. But they are the best swimming jerk baits you can get. The, the, like that. So I would show you that, but they have smaller hooks right now, and you wouldn't be able to see what I'm talking about. But yeah, with your crank suck. <laughs> what's that? Those lucky crowd hooks suck, but they do. Yeah, dude, yeah I nice. see it bumped a lot. I see it bumped yeah. a lot, bro. And I'm like, this is fucking stupid. So I tried single hooks and I started catching them more. And then I started putting expensive treble hooks on. Holy shit. Uh, that's the way to go. That's the way to go, man. I don't get bumped anymore. You stick to it. Like, there is no more bump anymore. They are dangerous, though. And a slimy barracuda will get you. You know what I mean? They're not regular anymore. Get, they're kind of gnarly. Like, if you get hooked by them, you're going to be SOL, I think. Right. So, what do you? When did you learn this, or how did it come about? And so, this goes in perfect, you know, with the gear. We're talking about gear mistakes and stuff like that. So, did, you, um, did you just somebody tell you, or did you just have a revelation? No, I was about watching it? Tactical Bassin, that okay. that freshwater guy. Yeah. The guy that teaches everybody how to fish. Um, it's called Tactical Bassin. Anything you want to learn, hey, they don't teach you shit about spotties, but anything you want to learn about freshwater bass, Tactical Bassin is your guy. He has every video down. Any kind of bait, underwater swimming footage, the guy's fuck the guy's amazing. Anyways, with a with a okay. With a with a hook that's not all the way here we go, how did I do that? Okay, with a hook that's not all the way uh at the end of the tail, it's gotta be going on a different way now. Uh oh. Okay. It's got to go on a different way. Now, see how this one I have just like the front one with that 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 down, that middle one sticking right out on those? Well, with a hook that's attached to the end of it, you actually want that back hook to be the other way. You want that middle hook to be sticking out on the top. So when that fish bites that, he gets that top hook right in the roof of his mouth. So if it's hanging off like this, if it's attached like this, uh, the top, you want that top middle one sticking out. It, it's opposite from the glide bait. That's awesome. Um, and that's what you do with your lucky craps. The factories, all factories, they don't do it right. You know what I mean? They're, they're probably put together in China and, and they don't do them. So check 
your stuff out. Check your jerk baits out. They're coming straight from the factory. You'll find them with nine times out of ten, dude. I find them. I have to change it. Yeah, oh, that's and crazy. I always change that often. Wow. I'll spend twenty two bucks on a lucky craft, and then ten ninety nine for six hooks. So, and then probably ten ninety nine for owner split rings. I like to make it. If I'm going to stand out there and throw that thing for hours, I want the best advantage I have, the best hookup ratio, the best I can get for you know in my time. Yeah, hell yeah. I'll spend the money. I'll spend yeah. the money. I mean, when you're talking about catching the fish, you know, especially when you land that big one, it might be your PB, it might be a world record. Exactly, so you dude. You yeah. had you had all your odds in your favor, dude. You're going to do it. Right. You know that they make um, there is a you can buy treble hooks that have the eye offset so that they always they'll always yeah, they're hooked in point. They're hooked in point. You don't want that on a fat. You don't want that on a big body bait because the fish won't get it. Because the, they're turned in, but with a narrow body bait, a small profile, if you use hooked in, tipped in points, that'll just grab tipped and you're, in it'll be insane. Yeah, yeah, That's tipped in points are EWG. Hell yeah! So what's out there on the uh, the bays right the now? Bay? What, how's the bite? Okay, this is just my opinion. I'm, I'm going to give it to you, man. It's it's I'm okay. I, in my it. opinion, the the Vena right now are circling from Bally High area through America's Cup Harbor through spanish landing area and they they get socked in around spanish landing and start to figure out if they want to go to liberty station or turn around and come back out so i've been doing well i'm not going to say well i've only got two this year but i just started jerk baiting like full time no and no more spotty fishing so and i've gotten skunked about eight times and i got it good the other night at spanish from the same rock i got a legal halibut i got a uh, corvina not a big one, but I got a Corvina and I got a Barracuda standing on the same rock at Spanish Landing, all in the same jerk bait in about an hour before dark. And we left it dark. Oh, dude, I awesome. didn't keep the halibut because I wasn't exactly sure, but he, he probably was legal. So you but just I, like, you just going because the Corvinas are biting or you just pumping the brakes? No, I'm just going to that time of the year. And I'm yeah. going to tell you something. Yeah. A lot of people say when you see a ton of bait or birds and all this crap, that doesn't the, the when they bite is when you don't see nothing and you just throw that jerk bait and hope for you know you're just throwing a long shot out there if you commit to it and when the bait is not around and there's not bird activity man that's when they bite i mean it, it could be a total desert but if there's a ton of bait they're hard to get they're hard to get them to bite the artificial unless you have live bait that gets them every time interesting and what's your go-to jerk bait the lucky craft Lucky Craft, yeah, I like the uh, Lucky Craft Surf Pointer 115. And the reason I like yeah, that is like because that one. it's sinking. And you can yeah. count them down and catch a bass on them at the same time while you're Vena fishing. So they're great. Yeah, and they wobble mm -hmm. down. That's how I get the halibut on them. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll let that thing the, sink um, all the way into the sand and then start winding it back. Have Fast, you seen the, and it doesn't come right up. It's got a nice lip on it. Yeah, it doesn't just come right it up. It does. Have you seen the... um? The Lucky Craft Sur or not the Surf Pointer, it's the um, it's the Wander, so it doesn't no. have a it doesn't have a lip, and it's a sinking bait, and it looks just like a jerk bait. It just doesn't have the lip on it, and okay. it actually, and it sinks when it sinks. So it is wobbles. That a sniper? It'll wobble down. No, it's made by Lucky Craft. Okay, but it's so it's, a stick, it, it's a stick bait. It just without the lip. It's not metal. You know, it's made out of the plastic or wood or whatever they make it out of, and they're cool, man. You should check yeah. them out. You got to work them or you just steady retrieve them or what do you got to do? Yeah, the, it's kind of like a countdown bait. You send it and it'll flutter down and then it's kind of wherever you want to be. Then you reel it in so you can reel it and then stop and it'll wobble down again. Then you reel it in and stop and it'll wobble down. And it gotcha. looks just like a um, like a 110 without the lip, but it's awesome. heavier, but it's heavier. Oh, yeah. 30 bucks, 20 bucks. Yeah, I probably like 20 bucks. I feel like maybe I saw him at Dana. I could be wrong, but. I, maybe I got them online. But. One of the, the what I think that the bay fish like the surface fish in the bay is what I like to say. The barracuda bonito uh, bina is what I like to try for. The the bonito start coming in, and this is my opinion. It's not, I don't know, it might not be true. Uh, I think the bina start coming in mid May, and I think they follow the grunion in every time grunion run. I think an influx of a shit ton of bina come in at the same time with the grunion because after that grunion run is when I start getting bit. Interesting. Yes. That's probably, that makes sense for sure. That's, That's awesome, right. Dude. I was at, at uh, Coronado Ferry Landing the other night, and I was at this beach area, 
and man, you can see the grunion coming from like a mile away. Just a huge just breezer, like a football field breezer, dude, coming at you. And I'm like, man, this is going to be insane. And then there was just a ton of fish. But the only thing that would have caught one is if you were to snag one of those grunion and fly lined it back out there on another rod. Because oh, these yeah. fish are going insane for grunion. They did not want the jerk bait or any glide bait. Or, I tried anything in my box to get, get them to bite. They right. wanted that grunion. That's so awesome, man. I've seen a lot of showing of this, these fish, man. They're not like spotty. You can't just go out and say, I'm going to catch some freaking Corvina today. No, you're not. That doesn't, it doesn't go that like that. You have to no. stand out there with a jerk bait or surface bait of somewhat and try for them. You, can, you know, you and, can and get you lucky and bass fish. fish. Yeah. You can get lucky in bass fish, and sometimes they eat your swim bait. I mean, that happens, but the hard bait yeah. is where it's at. They're more fun to use, and and they eat them. Yeah, any of those small pelagics, they're just like a tuna. They they roam. They don't stay <clears throat> in one spot. You know, they don't live in the Somebody rocks. Find them. The yeah, they, they, they travel, so they're not always like, you know, spotties or rockfish. You know where to find those. You go to the structure. They're in the same place. They live there, but these fish, they... They, they follow the bait they move they're never in the same spot yeah so you yeah. can't you can't go out and be like I oh think, i got the spot where i catch them you know it's they might be there I, but they're probably not going to be there again you know i yeah. see a lot more than i catch like like i said if there's a ton of bait man good luck getting them to bite because they're on that bait man they don't want no plastic bait yeah That's most true. of the time like i said i just start throwing the jerk bait just because it's summertime and you can fish bodies all year round. So yeah, I'll, yeah. I'd rather just go out there and try for, you know, some different fish. Yeah, that's true. You know, you gotta, you gotta take advantage of it when they're here. <clears throat> yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Like I said, you have all year to fish bodies. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're not going anywhere. They live. Here. I, was talk I, I was talking with cyborg and we were talking about doing a tournament. I wanted to do a Vena tournament because no one's ever done one, but then he's like, yeah, no one's gonna fucking enter either. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> the Corvina, a lot of people man, don't fish for Corvina, man. There's yeah. only like probably twenty of us, I think. Well, I think not only that, they're like a super people are like super secretive about it, you know, and they're very like Oh, I'll tell you. I know I'll tell you right where I'll give you things. Yeah. Spot burner is what my name is. You know what they call me in LA? What's that? Clout chaser. <laughs> Am I a clout chaser? <laughs> a clout chaser uh, i don't think so i mean you're out there fishing it's not like you're just you know they're just jealous that i fish every day and yeah day after you, work you can't be a clout chaser if you're out if you're fishing and doing the work and catching fish that's not a clout chaser right i think clout chaser is somebody that just doesn't do anything they're out there trying to follow what people are doing they're trying to tag along but you can't be a, a, a clout chaser when you're out there slaying fish and getting it done i mean that's just that's just a hater talking to me like yeah, that do 100 percent Hundred percent. I totally but agree. If, uh, if you guys have any questions, I'll answer them. But uh, that's that's about it on the Corvina. Uh, awesome, I'll tell you another thing. Uh, they're not very. They're not. There's some in Mission Bay, but it's not like San Diego Bay, man. Coronado. There was tonnage of Corvina and Coronado chasing those grunion. Yeah. If I right. had a snagging apparatus, dude, I could have. It would have been insane. I felt like I could go it. like a bear and get in there and just start grabbing fish that were that close to my feet yeah, on the beach because the grunion were like right there. I wanted That's to like kick some grunion onto the beach and like I didn't have any hooks, regular hooks. So I could, I, I don't know what to do. Lead head with a gr live grunion on it, I guess. Dude, whatever, whatever it takes, man. Hell yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I heard that's illegal. You're not allowed to grab a grunion and fly line them while grunion are running. That's illegal. So interesting. Don't do I it. I do. That's good to know, though. Yeah. Awesome, man. So where um, where can people find you? Where can we find you? Where can we follow you? Oh, um, a Kruger underscore DFA. Awesome, dude. Yeah, guys, check out Aaron's channel. Um, he's always out there slaying. This dude's been fishing spotties way before it was cool, and uh, he he can get on him, dude, for sure. So I appreciate you coming on, dude, and sharing some wisdom. That's so awesome. Thanks, Ruto. I appreciate yeah, you. We'll see you again, man. Good Later, talking bro. to you. Later. Later. Oose. Aaron Kruger, everybody. Hopefully, you guys learned something there. Yeah, you guys take that uh take that Corvina info because that stuff's hard to come by uh, for sure. But yeah, it was funny. He just he hit me up just an hour before the show and I was like, dude, I got to share some stuff. And it was about those hooks. And I was like, I mean, that goes in perfectly with the gear thing. Um, but this is what he was talking about. Maybe I can show it on here. Let 
give you guys a better view. But when the um, when the hook hits, see how this this one I rigged up wrong on purpose. So you see how these two hooks are on the outside. So when it's swimming, it's gonna hit it's gonna hit the jig. Let me see if I can get the better angles here. It hits the jig itself. Now it will go sideways, but it binds up the O ring. Where this one is rigged properly, and you see how the O ring is set. And those treble hooks lay on the bait, and then this one sticks out. So that's what he's talking about. So you want that eye to be split with the O ring. So when it falls, that's how it's swimming. Where this one that's rigged wrong, see how that eye is crossed with the with the O ring or the split ring? See how it naturally wants to hit the bait this way. And it can go, but sometimes you see how it binds up that thing and then it doesn't it doesn't swim right and it really wants to bounce this way so that's what he was trying to explain rig them up like this boom that way it lays down so yeah good stuff i mean people you know like aaron do that dude's fish is probably every single day and he learns something new it's like that guy's out there fishing all the time i think he does fish every day he's a lender roger i see you in here his brother Ooh, so welcome dfa in the house good seeing you dude glad you could stop by but yeah, I just thought that was good stuff. And uh, yeah, the Wiener are out there, dude. I've been seeing guys um, posting pics on them. So they're starting to slay them. So if you guys want to get them, so Cor Corvina, like he said, he's out there in uh, right there by Bally High and America's Cup. So they're there for sure. Let's see. I'm wondering what the heavy jigs you sell. These bluefin have been over the depths of 240. Yeah, the um, Captain Bill, the uh, 220 gram is what I have. It, so they'll, they'll get, yeah, 240, 300 feet for sure. You can get bit on those things. We had a guy, he got two, uh, who was it? I keep forgetting his name. Was it Angel or something like that? Um, he's in the show too, but he caught two bluefin on the, the 220. Yeah, I'll have to get you some of those, Bill, for sure. Angel or Andres? Or Andres, yeah. And then we've got, like Jessica said, some of the four, five, and 600 grams uh, coming pretty soon. So if you really want to get down there. That's good stuff. What else? I saw you guys talking. Uh, Roman caught one on the 20 gram. That was awesome. I know Aaron, Aaron was talking. Said to... would give him $20 if he caught one on the 20 oh, gram. Cal said he, he would go. Golden Death, You're the man, Cal. Cal gave him 20 bucks. Those guys that don't know Roman Castro, he's streaming right now. He's doing a live stream. He's a friend of the show and MMFC member. He's not a member. I mean, he created the thing. So I'm a member of that club and he's out there streaming, doing his thing. And I guess he caught one on the submission fishing jigs. So that's freaking awesome. The golden death hell yeah getting it done good stuff guys let me see what other questions we have here i'm gonna have room yeah i've talked about that i should probably have them on get them on here one of these days for sure what did marvin say look up what a stitching pony is i use mine in a vice third hand for tying knots such as this interesting yeah dude i'll check that out for sure in roman's chat salty dangler Remember six months, you should bring Mundo to watch your slow pitch to critique his technique. <laughs> That's funny. Tell him to come on, man. We'll give him some pointers. Sounds like he's slaying it, though. That's good stuff. Um, earlier, will Let's there see. be a video on how to fish a jig a fish? Fish a jig from shore. Will there be a video of fish a jigs from shore? Who was asking that? Saltwater Slayer. Asked saltwater. That. Oh, yeah, Saltwater Slayer. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that one for sure because you can still catch with these jigs. I don't fish from shore a lot, but... um. A lot of these guys do catch them. John Escoval um, is one right here. There was um, I see that you guys send me pictures all the time from fishing from shore with them, so they definitely work. And um, just a little bit of it, actually, it's a lot of a different technique, especially if you're really firing them out there. But yeah, they work for sure. I'm gonna have to get out there and make one. Maybe I'll go down to um, Coronado and just start making some casts or something like that. Fish Slayer, slow cow. Welcome to the show, bro. Thank you, sir. That's awesome. And how is the new boat? All right, guys. Yeah, we'll wrap it up pretty quick here. And we just got a few questions. Let's see. Jig Junkies, how's the new boat? Oh, yeah, I got a new boat, guys. I didn't even touch on that. <laughs> I just got a 19-foot uh, Arima Yellowtail, uh, Sea Chaser Yellowtail Edition. Um, so I'm going to go out there next week, try it out. Got the baby shower this weekend, so I'm not going to fish. Um, yeah, I'll be out there Wednesday. I gotta, still got to break in the engine, you know, even though you get the boat. It's like you got to put 12 hours on that thing and do it the right way so you don't damage the motor. It's a brand-new boat. doesn't have any miles on it. So we got to go do that. 
uh, so jig junkies, it's good. Just getting it rigged up, you know, getting the lines. It's a lot to learn, dude. I've never owned a boat before. So it's like, I don't even know what I need. I've just been reading up on it, asking people, like I said, Doug Rubin's been really helpful. Um, you know, Doug Rubin works on boats. If you guys didn't know that. Um, so he's got a boating service and he's been helpful and giving me tips about what to do. Like I said, Kevin Nakata's has given me great advice. Captain Dan too. Um, Brian likes the fish, you know, let me, you know, go out on his boat and, and show me some stuff. So it's super awesome guys. I really appreciate it. It's going to take a while before I get to that point for sure. Um, Dave Ray wants to know how many times you've walked out and just looked at it. How many times I just walked out and look at it? I mean, a couple times a day for sure. <laughs> I just go out there and stand on it and like play with the same latches that I've lifted up like a hundred times. <laughs> like doing nothing. Joey Basson24, do you slow pitch jigging on charters? Yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Or will you now that you have a boat? Will you oh, will I? Oh, oh, will I will I do slow pitch jigging charters? Um, not officially, no. I mean, I'll take you guys out for sure and we'll do um slow pitch jigging. But charters is a whole different thing. You have to have like a captain's license. You know, you got to put so much time on the water. Um, and then you got to get like commercial licenses. Um, and then you have, you got to go through a landing. There's a lot to it. I mean, I don't really have interest in that. But I mean, like unofficially, unpaid, yeah, taking friends out and jigging. Yeah, absolutely. But no plans for like official charters. So, and then, which reminds me, so we've got the, um, we're coming up on a thousand subs, guys. I don't know, how many do I have? You have six. 967 967 that's awesome we're at 950 i think just monday so you know we've been picking up subs like crazy guys so i really appreciate that it's so awesome when we hit a thousand um we'll come up with a giveaway i don't know maybe we'll give away a trip on my boat if you guys want to do that so what do you guys want gift card to the store we can do i can take you guys out on a, a trip show you how to jig we can you guys want merchandise or you just want jigs yeah we'll have a vote maybe I'll, I'll put a poll up see what you guys want for the uh thousand uh sub special we'll do a giveaway or definitely do a giveaway but what the giveaway is we'll, we'll figure it out we'll make sure something good at least worthwhile so we're almost there keep pushing for it, guys if you haven't subscribed uh pre please subscribe if you know people that like the show that haven't subscribed i mean hey man tell them what's up but you guys have been really supportive so i really appreciate that they all, super course, awesome you guys all want the trip oh, trip peter of course <laughs> peter 86 wants 20 gram juice. i should do that uh this will be more valuable than the trip. But then when I get the new ones in, they're going to be worthless. It's like the uh, it's like the inflated dollar. We should, um, we were talking about inflation. We should, we should hedge the dollar on the 20 gram jig. It'd probably be a lot more stable at this point. It'd be better than gold. I guess I want the 20 grams. Winter chooses. Oh, winter chooses. Yeah, we could do that too. Give like a price pack for sure. Just keep the show going. Yeah. Well, I know some of you guys will some of you guys will get, get trips anyway. So I don't know if that's like a <laughs> plus I'm not like I don't know if you want to go out and vote with me yet. I, I've still got a lot to learn. So maybe that would be down the road. If we did the trip with me, that'd be like once I know how to be responsible for other people, you know, for sure. Spin the wheel of prizes. Yeah, we could do that. And maybe do like multiple um multiple giveaways. So that way, like multiple people win. That'd be cool too. Instead of having one grand prize, maybe like do a bunch of jigs worth more than a dollar. Yeah. I need to call the president. I need to call the federal reserve. The have them put them on the jig. Dog. Yeah. That and the cost the hundred or the, the buck 50 Costco hot dog. That's like, that's the only thing that hasn't gone up. That thing's beaten inflation every year undefeated. <laughs> Is there anything that's, that's held more value than the Costco hot dog? I couldn't think of anything. We were talking about that today. And it was like, we went to Costco. We were like, damn, man, 150 for a Costco dog. That That's undefeated. And I was like, I think this is the year. This is the year they're going to have to raise that price. There's no way they're making money on that thing. Peter 86 in Arizona T. Is that thing still 99 cents? Yeah. It is? I think so. Dude, that's they impressive. Made, they memes about it. Oh, that's impressive too. So Costco hot dog, Arizona T. Man, those guys needed a award or something. That's pretty impressive. But would it be the 20 gram assassin or the 20 gram sumo? 20 gram assassin or sumo. They both. I think the assassin sold out first. Yeah, for sure. But even though the assassin sold out first, I think people have like gone to like the sumo more. I like the sumo. I don't know for sure, but I think I think that's kind of how the sentiment went. It's interesting. Be the first trip inside Oceanside Harbor. Yeah. That'd be a boring trip, man. That tiny harbor. 
on the hot dog? Maybe. Ask Alexa more. All right. Yeah, they have it. It's a loss leader for sure. They're not making anything on that. They just do it to get people in. But still, I mean, to do something you know you're losing money on, that's pretty impressive. I heard that the owner or whatever made himself a vow he would never raise the price on that or something. Je Jessica said the owner said she heard he, he made a vow that he was never going to raise the price on the hot dog. That's what I heard today. That's what we heard. That's the word on the street. Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, enough talking about the uh, hedging inflation on the hot dog. But uh, hopefully you guys learned something. Thank you, Aaron Kruger, for coming on. Um, hopefully you guys learned something on the knot. I know it was uh, my first try with the do camera action. So we'll get used to it. We'll get it nailed down and maybe make it a little better. I know the knot was kind of tough to see. But if you have any questions, maybe I'll... Um, do a video with like some real cameras and stuff like that but we got the dual setup now so now i can show more jigs and stuff um super awesome you guys come hang out uh roman castro i think he's still streaming if he's still out there go check out his show uh give him some love go tell me we're uh impressed seeing those that assassin jig Saltwater says, what would be better for sure assassin or sumo what would be better for sure salt slay uh, assassin or sumo i would say probably the assassin you get more flutter action the sumo is good for like um it slides under you can bomb the sumo because it's got the belly but that one would kind of go up and backslide it doesn't have the same flutter but it would still work i actually i, sh I shouldn't say i haven't fished the sumo that much from shore but i know some of these guys do when they get bit so I, sh I shouldn't say one or the other i would say assassin just for the action on the fall but Sumo would probably, I know they work because I've seen people catching from the sumo on the shore. Salty and Dave Rage say assassin. Salty and Dave Rage say assassin too. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. It's a little flatter. I think you're going to get more out of it with the uh, with the couple feet that you're going down in water. I think the assassin will put out more action on the way down than the sumo. So we'll see. Yeah, guys, we'll see you at the CCA. We still got a few shows before that. But um, yeah, Sea Samurai says he gets, dude, and. Sea Samurai has been killing it. This is Kevin, he's been crushing it from shore with the with the sumo jig. So take it for what you will. I know he's won some rounds of Spotty Bowl fishing from shore with the uh, slow death sumo. Yeah, he said he's seen his best days from shore with the sumo. Don't sleep on the sumo. I, I think either one. I, I think a lot of it is dependent on the fish too. You know, try them both. Get the different action for sure. Salty would say that he thinks the assassin. But Kevin's actually fished from shore, so. He's seen, I've seen both. I've seen you guys sending me pictures of both, so they both work. John Escobar says sumo too, so I think that might be your answer right there. Try it out. All right, guys. Yeah, if you want to buy jigs, you want to help support the stream, uh, submissionfishing.com. Uh, check it out. Buy some jigs. You can get some hats. Um, then again, you don't have to buy anything. The stream is free. Um, just like the show. Just be here every Thursday. I love having you guys. love hanging out. Hopefully, you guys get some knowledge and learn something. Yeah, that's why we're here. Get our black belt in fishing. And um pleasure being with you guys. We'll see you on the next one. Oos. Good luck out there this weekend, guys.